everyone, welcome to another video review by Commensurex, and today I'm going to be reviewing another one of my Bioform mocks, which I haven't done in a little bit of time, but uh, you know, it's 2016 now, so new sets, new Bioformers. So today we're going to be reviewing uh, a version of 2016 Kopaka, and this is Dark Kopaka, actually more corrupted version of the real guy. So yeah, here he is in his ship mode, and probably one of the first things you're going to notice is he has these orange claws in the front. Now these I put on just because they look cool. I mean, does not does that not look cool? You got some claws up there. Looks like he's going to grab you as he rams into you. But, um, the only way to open these is to open the paw pieces they're attached to, so like that. And so you could you know ram into things, have them hold things up front, but you know most of the time just have them kind of connected together to form the uh, nose. Um, he does have some small wings made out of these uh, Galleon Kopakas 2016 Crystal Blades. So, yeah, silver and light blue. Um, you can see, um, probably from this view right here, that he looks kind of asymmetrical. And that's because he is very, very asymmetrical. Um, you'll see over here, you have these dark blue shells from, uh, you know, 2016 Kopaka. Your foot, you got a little bit of trans red and a trans blue bone here and this, like, little thing here. But over on the other side, you have some gold. These are uh, two pieces. I don't, I don't know what you call them. Crystalline elemental spewing pieces. Got some gold. Got some trans blue down here and up here. And you see a little bit of a glimpse of a unity piece. And then here's his head back here. He's uh, looking behind him. At least you can't sneak up on him. Am I right? And he does also have an open unity piece on the top. Which, with the 2016 um, guys especially, that's what I want to do for all of them. Have them be able to unify with their creatures in vehicle mode. So yeah, um, here's them from the bottom. It's okay. It's not the best. You know, it's got some armor. You can see his hands down here and this gear for, uh, you know, the waist swiveling function, which does kind of get in the way of positioning these front things because if you can see here, this is kind of, you know, hitting this so I can't push it all the way. And then, you know, this one has a little bit more space. It's just, it gets in the way a little bit um, for this guy, not a whole lot. So yeah, it's okay. Um, definitely not the best ship mode. Um, probably could have done something more creative, but um, this is kind of the concept behind him. He's kind of thrown together and just kind of junky, I guess. So yeah. So like I said, he can combine with Melum, and let's go ahead and do that. So here's Melum. Now you can combine Melum with his uh, head forward like this, or you can combine him with his head back here. I'm going to try my best to show you both. I'm going to actually do a cut, you know just to make things a little bit more smooth. So here's Melon Combine um, facing forward. As you can see, it looks okay. You do have this nice, um, his head up here up front, which looks pretty nice. You have his uh, claws up here, which add a little bit of flair with this gold. You can see the gears um, on his back. So um, I guess that's just, you know, if you like that or not. Um, you can kind of still use this function, though not really sure what you'd use that for, besides, you know, kind of scaring the enemy, like, yeah. And here's his feet just kind of stuck back here, and I have to move this uh, little thing out the way. So yeah, there's him facing forward. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you him when he's backwards. And he'll, and here's Melm attached backwards. So you can see I saw these paws up front that had a little bit of bulk and flare. And back here, you know, you just kind of put his head back there. Um, this one, um, the other... Let me start with the other one. The one I just showed you before this one is a little bit tight on here. Um, you know, you can pull Melm off like really easily. It kind of almost doesn't fit all the way on. This one fits better, but I think the other one looks a little bit more, you know, better. Looks cooler. But uh, yeah, they both look pretty cool. And at least you can combine Melm while he's in the vehicle form. So uh, yeah, with that, I guess we'll get on to transformation. So now let's uh, transform this guy, which is, isn't really too hard, you know. But, um, I did want to try to utilize the waist swiveling function in this guy, and I actually managed to. Which is, you know, the way I did is like, duh, I didn't think of that before, but, you know, it's kind of new, or, you know, kind of cool that I find that out at, you know, some point. So, you'll take him, first thing you're going to do is pull this uh, little thing up, that way you can pull out his leg. Now, the, even the transformation is a little bit asymmetrical on this guy, so what you're going to do is pull, kind of pull these uh, two front bits down turn them around and pull out these arms and these are pretty much you know kind of folded up to fit right in there so you're just going to kind of rotate them straight you know fix the hands up and then put them down so that's really simple so next oh, drop the claw I will pick that up later 
Anyway, so next what you want to do, move these farther forward so you can get a little space. Then you're going to bring this leg down and just on this one, actually, yeah, on just this one you're going to spin the foot around like so. And then this one, you're going to pull this down and then you're going to spin, actually no, wait, I'm hold up, okay, I was wrong. So you do spin this foot around, but you also spin this whole leg around, just this leg. This one will just, you know, come up and it'll be fine. So next what you want to do is you're going to pull these back here, like so. You know, just like so. If these blades get in the way, you can you know, always fold them up or something. So just pull those back here. Now you're going to spin this around to the front. And what you're actually going to do is you're going to take this gear. I have both the gears on them, on him. So I'm trying to figure out how to show this the best way. So... You know, you can still do that. What you want to do is pull them out a little bit. Not off, just out a little bit. So that you can do this and spin this 360 degrees. Like so. So just, just line that up. And then you can push this back in. Now, he's facing the right way. All over. So, just straighten everything out. Now, for these, I'm just going to kind of place them on his back. Like so. Then you're gonna take this, this is a shoulder pad, just put that over his shoulder. Then you're gonna kind of you know put these together and then you can kind of fold the claws over them if you like. To do kind of that, form a little bit of a backpack. Then these you're just gonna rotate and then kind of put down behind them. Like so. So there you have it. So then almost done here. And now the last step is the head which simply enough I, oops let's pull this up and then spin it around and here you have dark kopaka in his robot mode so here is dark kopaka in his robot mode and as you can see he looks quite interesting to say the least so let's go ahead and take a look at him, starting from the legs. His feet are both the same, white feet with friction extenders, because why not? Alright, so um, his legs. The legs use the same structure, of course, that they're the same length. Um, you know, you just have this bone piece right here with the two technicals, the trans blue one, and then this is the normal size upper limb piece and a friction extender, so you know, it can stand. No problem with that. So, the... Differences are mostly in the armor. Over here, we have a Unity piece, which is the same in the same position as on the actual Unity Kopaka, but I uh, flipped it upside down, like so. And then, you know, you have the uh, connector on the back. Over here, though, I have this uh, size 4 red shell, or transparent red orange shell. Up here, I have the um, dark blue armor with a white um, 2015 armor add-on piece for Bionicle. Over here I have Kopaka's gold and crystal piece, and then a uh, five long gold shell. So, there's your asymmetry down there. The chest, you know, it's kind of hard to make a chest asymmetrical. I do have the skeletal ribcage piece because he's kind of cobbled together. He's not fully built, I guess you could say. And then on his shoulder you have this uh, trans orange piece, and then over on this shoulder you have a shoulder pad made out of the Vorox armor, I believe it's called. And that goes down into a bone piece, which has no armor. And then you have your dark blue bone piece, or dark blue shell with the white armor add-on piece and a silver hand. But over here is a little bit different. You have this gold here with the gold and crystal piece from Kopaka. And then his whole lower arm and hand is transparent blue. Now the reason I did that is actually because um, in the story he actually formed without his uh, arm. So when he formed, this is what formed. That is the all that formed. So, using his ice powers, you know, he created an arm and a hand. Because, why not? So that he can have them both. Yeah, that's the, you know, beauty of having ice powers. You can, like, form limbs and control them. And then, um, you know, his mask, 2015 Golden Copa, uh, 2016 Golden Copaca, and I have the blue stud still in there. I use the blue eye stock, the uh, shorter version, because I like that better. And then back here, you just have this little backpack with, with some empty space. And that just covers up the unity piece, but you know, you can always move that out the way. They have these blades hanging off of his hips. So, uh, you know, quite an interesting build, to say the least. I mean, if you don't like it, then, um, 
I'd say I did my job well because he's supposed to look very unorthodox, just kind of cobbled together like, you know, somebody just threw a whole bunch of stuff together, half done, you know, something like that. Just kind of bad looking, I guess. It's kind of the goal. But uh, yeah, so there he is. So now let's take a look at his weapon or weapons or, you know, whatever you want to use here when we're done with this take. Anyway, so his weapon, um, I guess uh, right after you transform him or, you know, when he's, I don't know, just his weapon for now is this lengthened version of 2015 Kopaka Spear. You see it has this ice thing like the um, his spear and it has the Gurok Staff end. But down here it has some white Burak guys at the tip and then, you know, it's extended of course. So, uh, yeah, that's basically his weapon, but uh, he can make this into do into two different weapons that he normally uses. So to do that, it's actually pretty simple. So what you're going to do is take off this whole top section. It has a four long axle and a double axle connector and the Gurok staff. And you're going to place that in the back of his other hand. Like so, then down here, what you're going to do is take off this part which is another four long axle and then this connector and then put these two Burak eyes back onto this side of the staff like so and then this goes up top over here so then now he has a couple of sticks but that's not all what you're going to actually do is spin him around to the back and take off these crystal blades like so you can just kind of fold these up however you like and then you're just going to put one in each of these like so, and like so. And there you have it. Those are his main weapons. He has two spear weapons. This one is, you know, basically Kopaka 2015 spear with, uh, you know, the Borak eyes at the end and this crystal blade. This one's more custom, but it does still incorporate the Gurok staff. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Is it Gurok or Gorok or Gurok, you know, whatever. Anyway, so there's his weapons. And um, on the functions, this one actually does have a function, surprisingly, since most of my mocks actually don't incorporate a function besides transformation. You can still access this gear back here. You just want to kind of move these uh, little pieces out the way. And then you can spin him, which I think it's good. It's a uh, good pairing with his weapons. As if you pose them in the right way, you know, you kind of get him like this. You know, maybe get him like this, something like this. So if you pose him like that and then you start spinning him, it's kind of like alternating attacks, like with Tahu, I guess. So, you know, he stabs you with that, you know, comes around, stabs you with that. Or, you know, he slices with this, and it comes to slice with that. You know, how you can do like high and low or both at the same target, you know, it works. And plus, you know, waist articulation, so that's cool. Posing, you know, purposes and all that. So yeah, pretty interesting guy. I do like his weapons. They're simple, but you know, they look good and I think they fit him pretty well. Now let's go ahead and unify him once again with Melum. And um, you saw a little bit earlier that he does still have an available unity piece on his back, just covered up by these uh, large black paw pieces. So let's bring in Melum, whom I have prepared for unification and here he is and he's scared because this guy's not exactly you know I'll, I'll get to that later but anyway let's put him to the side what you're gonna do is just kind of you know unfurl these claws like so just get them all opened up and then do that so you're just gonna kind of spread them out back here and then you can take melum and just as simply enough, like you would on any of the actual sets, you're going to plug him in like so. Then you could put this kind of back. And what I like to do with these, I kind of like to put them on Melum's sides, like so. And then I put the claws onto Melum. So it's kind of trapping him on to Dark Kopaka. So then, this is where things get a little bit kind of odd, I guess, since his shoulders are asymmetrical. One's bulkier than the other. So, what you're going to do is put this paw over the shoulder, like so. You know, that works. Just getting to really get down there. Over here, it's going to be a little bit awkward, I guess, because there's not any, like, large shoulder pads like the real Kobaka has or, like, on his other side. So, you just kind of set that on directly onto his shoulder. It's a little bit lower than the other one, but, oh, well, I mean, what, what are you going to do? You know, besides giving him the actual shoulder pad, but, you know. 
And then this is where um things really don't work. Because um this guy's neck is actually like one ball joint higher than you know the unity pieces were meant to be in relation to their necks. Um I'm trying to explain this, but his head is up elevated too high for Melum. So when you put his head onto this guy, it only halfway works. You can't really fit it on like you would want to. So give you a good look at that. So yeah. Doesn't exactly fit on. Mel's neck's too short. You could extend it if you want, but I'm not going to. So there is Unified Dark Kopaka. And this is like his story goal. And I'll get to that in a second. So basically the story behind this guy is that he was actually formed, if you remember my uh Dark Tahoe review a couple of uh a couple months back actually. The King Dark Tahoe review. Um, it ended where he had created something that, you know, none of the Toa noticed and that, you know, what he created was actually a Kopaka mask that was meant to form into a companion as Dark Kopaka, you know, that was do his bidding and everything. But he only half formed it before he was defeated and the mask was taken. So that's why Dark Kopaka looks the way he does. The mask um, fully formed or, you know, mostly formed his body, but it was incomplete. It was like, you know, skeletal hobbled together just it was a mess so what Dark Opaka figured is that if he was t um, to unify with Melum then perhaps it would make him you know more complete and it would kind of you know just complete him I guess is the best way to put it it would just make him better and just whole again so that's what he's after and uh, he actually wasn't apparently evil at first to the Toa you know he's kind of nice to them help them out and stuff to try to get close to Melum and eventually he did bet betray Kopaka, took Melum, and clamped him onto his back, and then is now holding him until his, I guess, e whole unification is complete, and he becomes, like, whole again. That's the story on him. He's a very, his character is very much like Kopaka, you know, because he kind of is Kopaka. But, um, where Kopaka is smart and, I guess, distant might be the best way to put it, this guy is just you know, smart, calculating, and pretty cold. He's also a really great actor because he fooled every single one of the Toa up until the last moment. They had no clue what was going on. So yeah, there's a story on that guy. Pretty interesting character. So yeah, there you have it. Dark Kopaka in a nutshell. Broken, unwhole character who's just trying to get himself together. See what I did there? You know, whole pun, completion pun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm terrible at puns anyway so yeah there you have it so yeah hope you guys enjoyed thank you for watching and please leave a like if you did enjoy and uh, don't forget to subscribe to see more mock content and i'll see you guys later